Hi, my name is Andrew Park and this is Circuit Introduction. This video uses a fast simulation from University of Colorado. So a simple circuit consists of three simple elements, a voltage source, in this case a battery, a resistor, in this case I'm using a light bulb because a light bulb lights up, but resistor doesn't. And I need wires to connect all these elements together and form a conducting path for the electrons to flow through. So this is it. That's a simple circuit. Now this light bulb is not quite as bright as uh, I'd like it to be. So I'm going to add one more battery so that it can be brighter. So this is a simple circuit. Now uh, here's a couple things I'd like you to take a note of. So when you uh, these little balls, they elect represent electrons and you see these electrons flowing from one side of the light bulb and after they go in through the light bulb it doesn't stop there it actually flows back out in fact the rate at which these electrons are flowing on this side and on this side are the same same electron flows in flows out so if this light bulb isn't using up electrons what is it using to light up it's using the energy the electrons are flowing from this side to that side because they have more energy on this side, more potential energy on this side, and less potential energy on this side. So it's flowing from the side of higher electrical potential energy to lower electrical potential energy, and it's giving up this energy as it's going through the lamp. So this light bulb gets the energy, turns it into thermal energy. When it gets hot enough, it glows. The second thing I'd like you to note is how current at, let's say, this point in the circuit is exactly the same as the current at this point in the circuit. This is for two reasons. One, electrical charge is conserved. The current that's leaving this point of circuit, well, eventually it has to come here. It, um, it doesn't disappear somewhere in the middle. And you don't, these batteries are not producing any new charges. It's just pushing the charges through. And the second reason is these electric charges, they can't really accumulate at any point in the circuit. Um, you, could, you cannot compress these charges. The reason is if you have some accumulation of charges, let's say here, you know, likes repel, so that, elect that accumulation of electrons will repel other electrons. So in a circuit, because of two, two reasons, you have this one simple rule, that in a loop of current, the electric current is uniform. It's the same at any point in this loop. So this is simple circuit. Now to get something more interesting, uh, you have to add more light bulbs. So let me build another circuit that's similar to that one here, but this time I'll build it with two light bulbs. So here's one light bulb and a second light bulb. And I'll connect this with wire so that there's one single loop connecting these batteries to the light bulb, light bulb, and then back to the battery. So I need the wires connecting the light bulbs and wire connecting the light bulb to the other end of the battery. Now, when you look at this, something interesting happens. Even though I have two light bulbs here, it's not as bright as a single light bulb. This single light bulb is actually brighter by itself than these two light bulbs together. That's a very strange thing. And this is because of resistance. Each of these light bulbs represents resistance. In fact, if I remove this light bulb and just connect the wires directly, you get a really fast flow of charges. So what these light bulbs are doing is they're slowing down the charges. They're slowing down current. That's what resistance does. In this, light, in this circuit, you have electric charges flowing through one light bulb and then these same charges are flowing through the second light bulb. So these charges are flowing through twice as many light bulbs. So there's twice as much resistance. Um, what that means is the current that's going through these light bulbs is half of, um, half of what it is for this uh, single light bulb circuit. Now, for these batteries, the amount of voltage this battery is providing is the same. The power in the electrical circuit is a voltage times current, same voltage, lower current, 
means lower power, lower energy usage per time. That's why these light bulbs are dimmer than the single light bulb. Um, here's another way to look at it. Uh, as these charges come through, uh, it goes through this light bulb. And then these charges are not done yet. They cannot go back to the battery yet. It has to go through a second light bulb. So it comes in with some amount of energy. And when, as it's going through the first light bulb, it only has to use half its energy so that it can use the remaining half of energy to go through the second light bulb. That means as it's going through each light bulb, it has to do it slower. So this is, this is a series of circuit. And um, as you, as before, you have a single loop here, single loop here. So the current here is the same current here. So is it always going to be the case that as we add more light bulbs, it's just going to get dimmer and dimmer? Well, um, if you're adding them in series, then yes. Um, but series is not the only way to build a circuit. We can build something called a parallel circuit. So uh, let me leave this alone and I'll build my parallel circuit here. So in a parallel circuit, this is what I have. I have my one light bulb it's connected to these batteries. Batteries. And as I add more light bulbs, I add it in parallel. What that means is it's got its own independent path to the battery. So instead of connecting them all in one single loop, I connect wires so that there's a second set of loop that goes through the, the light bulb. And when I do that, what you are seeing is both light bulbs are bright. So this is what's going on. Let's imagine tracking one of these charges. Now, when this charge comes to this junction, it has to make a decision. Does it go through the first light bulb or second light bulb? Let's say it goes through the first light bulb. Then it goes through the first light bulb. And then it comes to this junction. And then it's free to flow back to the battery. So as this charge flows through this light bulb, it can use all its energy as it goes through the light bulb because it'll be able to go back to the battery. It's the same story for the charge that went through the other light bulb. Unlike the series circuit, in a parallel circuit, this charge does not have to go through both light bulbs in order to come back to the battery. So as you add more light bulbs, you um, add more brightness. And this is because, so this is because these additional light bulbs are not adding more resistance. In fact, when you look at when you just look at this uh, part of the circuit, let's say that matches up with the one light bulb, then the resistance from here to here is that of the single light bulb. The other light bulbs, whether they are attached or not, it doesn't really affect the other light bulbs. On the other hand, when you look at the series circuit, when I disconnect one light bulb, that disconnects all the light bulbs because there's this only one path for the current to flow. So if you break that circuit anywhere, it breaks for all the charges. But here, this is one path. This is another path. This is another path. So when you break one path, well, um, the other two paths are still there. So the charges are free to continue flowing through. So this is a quick introduction to uh, series and parallel circuits. Now the question I want to want to leave you with is uh, when you look at your um, house circuit, how the power outlets are wired in your home, do you think they're connected parallel or in series? Now if they're connected in series, what that would mean is that every single power outlet has to be in use. If you are not using even a single power outlet, well, um, you can't use any other power outlet. So for you to use the TV, your toaster has to be plugged in. Uh, when they are in parallel, what that means is that if you are not using one of the outlets, the other outlets will continue to work. Now, that doesn't mean that they are not somehow connected together. I can sometimes do something 
Um, I don't want to say stupid. I can do something that'll mess up the whole circuit. I can, for example, short circuit the power source. That's when I connect one end of the battery to the other end directly. Now, when I do that, um, then a lot of charges are flowing through this. And because of that, there aren't really charges that are able to flow through these light bulbs. And um, my house burns down. <laughs> so please do not short circuit your power sources. Um, so in a parallel circuit, um, you could be doing something to affect the battery itself. But unless you are doing that, then what you are doing with the other parts of the circuit does not affect the remaining part of the circuit. So once again, this is the quick introduction to series and parallel circuits. And please look at the slides for more detailed information about uh, detailed information and examples on fun things with the parallel and series circuits.